So finally, let's turn to Mermaids. The controversial children's charity is now going to be under an official statutory investigation by the Charity Commission. I mean, Joe, I said the first question that sort of comes to mind is what took the Charity yeah. Commission so long? <laughs> <laughs> No, completely. Um, and I mean, there have been so many scandals um, th- that have broken over the course of recent months. Um, uh, scandals concerning the people who are on the board of trustees and, and safeguarding concerns, far more serious safeguarding concerns, dealing with the treatment of, of I think the word vulnerable gets used too, far too frequently nowadays. But the kind of children who are contacting mermaids and really do have a stake to that label of, of these are vulnerable children who are confused about their identity you know, really are in a kind of worrying, troubling place who actually need some reassurance that, no, you're perfectly normal, Mm. you know, go go and carry on. You know, it could be just a phase. Um, Let's keep a a watchful eye on on how you feel. They don't need pushing down the route of being told that they are transgender. Um, What's your address? And we can send you out chest binders without your parents' permission. And this is the kind of thing that Mermaids has been up to and, and funneling very young children into to completely unmoderated chat forums as well. Um, so all of these scandals have been bubbling away under the surface. But, but you know, this is in some ways just the highlight and the most recent things that have attracted everyone's attention. The director, Susie Green, I mean, I'm sure everybody by now has seen her famous mm. TEDx YouTube video. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't, I would urge everyone to watch it because it is toe-curlingly awful the way she is so upfront about talking about the fact that her husband couldn't cope with the fact that her son um, appeared at a young age to be slightly effeminate, had a preference for playing with girls' toys and his dad couldn't cope with that fact. And the mum then corrected her son by taking him for gender reassignment, so-called gender reassignment surgery at the age of 16. I mean, this is a completely awful personal story. And yet that has been out there for years now, completely in pu- full public view. She's she's been proud uh, to show this video and have it circulating. And it's very, very interesting if you track the comments on this YouTube video, you know, go back a few years and they're all completely celebratory. Yeah. Oh, well done, Susie. You know, mm. so brave for you to have shared this video footage. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, and then the, it's only the, the very, very much more recent comments that are raising alarm about what she's actually saying and suggesting that this isn't the brilliant story it's cracked up to be. So I think that, so the thing about mermaids is, you know, people have used the phrase hiding in plain sight. This was all out there. So I think you're absolutely right to ask, you know, what has taken the Charity Commission so long? To answer that question, my guess is it's because um, mermaids has been celebrated by celebrities, by public figures. It's had the backing of key institutions in the UK. Okay. Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan, exactly. <laughs> the through line of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's been funded by the National Lottery. Uh, it's won government grants from the Department for Education. It's been in schools, prisons, the police service. It's got absolute or had absolute official legitimacy. So why enough would the Charity Commission launch an investigation against it? Tom. With this particular case, obviously we'll see what happens with this particular compliance review and so on. And maybe I'm just in an oddly sunny optimistic mode but it does feel like things are kind of heading in the right direction on the gender identity question in the uk at least if you compare it to certainly the us where things are still going absolutely nuts in some different respects because that's what if you kind of take the combination of you had all these gender critical women who you know winning broadly speaking their sort of uh their tribe their workplace tribunal cases for being sacked or ostracized or otherwise for their particular views there was obviously the uh, CAS review in relation to the Tavistock Clinic, updating mm. of NHS guidelines. Now you kind of have, um, obviously, the the Charity Commission review in relation to mermaids, various different points in which kind of institutions, whether it be a courtroom or whether it be, you know, a regulator or so on, starting to kind of do their job and trans or gender ideology 
not really being able to withstand that kind of level of criticism, the sort of scrutiny that it was always being denied. It's not to say that it's a kind of perfect picture and there's so many other areas, but I'm kind of struck by how, un, particularly unlike America, John, I'm not sure how you feel about this, it does feel like we're on two completely different trajectories. Yeah, yeah I'm, not as, oh, I'm not as optimistic, I'm afraid, at all. I mean, if you look north of the border, you've got the most shocking legislation mm. going through yeah. in Scotland that will allow children as young as, well, I would still say children at the age of 16, to change their gender identity, a uh, piece of paper, no questions asked. You know, you can do that. I think it's three month time scale that yeah. you will all you have to submit. And this is being pushed through the Scottish Parliament by Nicola Sturgeon. Um, I read in the newspaper today that, that the, the timing for this going through the Scottish Parliament is now set for something like the 22nd and 23rd of December, i.e., you know, when the press won't be covering it. Mm. Um, people are going to be looking the other way. And I think you're right in the sense that Sturgeon is at least aware that there is now opposition to this. Mm. And perhaps a year ago, she'd have been a bit more bold and put this through in the normal way and expected to get it through the Scottish Parliament without the pushbacks. I mean, I guess one good thing is at least she is aware that there will be criticisms levelled at her for doing this. But the fact is this this legislation does look set to pass. And yeah. what not only does that put young people in Scotland, as far as I'm concerned, um, at at risk of making kind of very life-changing decisions at a ridiculously young age, but it also creates, raises kind of very important questions that few people are asking about the the nature of the union yeah. in the UK. You know, if a kid lives in Berwick-upon-Tweed, for example, or Cumbria, and fancies changing their gender, you know, what's to stop them mm. just hopping across the border, kind yeah. of filling in the paperwork or whatever you have to do and coming back? How can the UK as a, a union exist when you've got two very, very different laws operating? And my other concern, reason for being less optimistic, is just that I think so many institutions have taken on board the letter of and the spirit of mermaid policies that they are almost in a position to drop the label mermaids, mm. to do away with the badge, because the the actual spirit of, of that this idea, which I think is the most dangerous idea of all, that children are born in the wrong body, you know, that's been so accepted amongst so many of these elite institutions or, or you know, even within schools that this is now a kind of a completely mm. accepted um orthodoxy it's become that that like say you you can almost do away with mm. mermaids they can be sacrificed mm. because the bigger picture is, has been accepted there'll always be other groups to fill the void mm. i suppose exactly it is interesting though because also how the, the extent to which this has become a live issue mm. in a way that it wasn't even until very recently is something that i'm also quite cheered by but and that's not something that's come easily obviously a lot of people have had to go through hell in many cases to get to this particular point there's been a lot of agitation, there's been a lot of kind of fighting in one particular arena and then moving to the next and so on and so forth. But it is striking how the, the, the force of the polling public opposition, say in Scotland, to these measures is really quite significant. Yeah. What's interesting is looking at the recent kind of um, Nats and social attitude surveys and stuff, you've actually seen public attitudes towards what we could call like gender ideology issues harden over mm. the course of recent years and that's not because as some people would like to put it everyone's become really transphobic because they've been listening to too many julie bindle lectures or whatever it's obviously because of the fact that the implications of these measures whether it's everything from changing um your gender on a passport through to women's spaces and so on and so on and so forth has become so much clearer to everyone because that people are actually talking about it yeah. you know uh, men in particular might not have to think about the importance of sex-based rights, et cetera, have been confronted with the issue to a greater degree, um, as well as it just becoming clear to everyone more broadly. So it is a kind of interesting thing that this has become so much more of a kind of live political issue. And the, the, the thing that cheers me, especially with education, I think education was more than any other realm. It's going to hang around in there for so long without very concerted effort. But it does feel at the moment like there's more of a, they will have more of a fight on their hands yeah. than they would have done certainly five years ago, you, you know, can, even a few years ago, it feels like. You can certainly see why the trans activists didn't want to debate over this <laughs> issue. <laughs> no, well, I think the ultimate irony is why this has come before the Charity Commission now is because it was mermaids who took the LGB alliance to to court for breach of mm. Charity Commission regulations. Yeah. And it was that that exposed a lot of the bullshit, really, mm. that that was behind um, the, the ideas that mermaids were putting forward. And you just think if they hadn't overreached in that way, um, then... And then who knows, we might not be where we are now with the Charity Commission investigating them.